We present the fuel cell. First, we have to prepare our cell by humidifying it. So, we use a distilled water. With this syrinx, inserting a little drop of water inside the cell. The cell with two tubes can emit the gas that will be collected into ampoules that are overturned and insert into two small glasses containing water. First, we will use the fuel cell to do something very simple. The electrolyze of the water contained in the same cell. And then we can connect a voltage source that is either a photovoltaic cell or simply a battery with two rechargeable batteries. And we begin to observe that what happens when the fuel cell is working simply producing the division between the atoms that make up the water molecule that it forms hydrogen on one end and oxygen on the other, going to form the gas with the atomic molecules O2 and H2. Let the fuel cell work for a few minutes. Let's first look at the level of the gas that is being formed and we ask to ourselves on which side will be the oxygen and on which side will be the hydrogen. Someone may think that the volumes are proportional to the size of the atom, the atomic mass. In reality, we must remember the Avogadro's law, that say, equal volumes correspond to an equal number of molecules. As one side, a volume is formed that is double compared to the other. Then we realize that every time we have an oxygen atom, we will have two atoms of hydrogen, a molecule of O2, two molecules of H2. It means that where there will be the double volume, we will have the hydrogen. Where we will be the single volume, we'll have oxygen. So let's do observe that this side there is hydrogen and on this side there is oxygen. We stop the production of hydrogen and oxygen and let the fuel cell working for what is its nature. In the second part, we use the fuel cell to produce electricity from chemical energy. How does it work? We have the hydrogen that faces to the anode. The hydrogen undergoes an oxidation process, so it loses an electron, and the proton can pass through the porous septum, which allows protons to pass to the cathode. The electron will follow an external path in the circuit so that the fuel cell becomes a pile which pushes electrons into the wires and produces electricity. What happens to the protons when they arrive at the cathode? They emit an oxygen atom that undergoes a reduction process. It captures two electrons and makes itself available to bind with the two protons so as to form the water molecule. Then we will produce water that returns to humidify the cell. The passage of electrons into the electrical circuit it can feed, for example, a motor. We try to connect a small motor and see how this engine is driven by the electric current that is produced by letting the fuel cell work. Can we ask yourself, is this system without pollution? In this phase we agree, because what is produced is water, but in the separation of hydrogen and oxygen we have used electricity. We have had to recharge these batteries, 
So, as all processes of energy transformation, we will be produced by the disorder. Thus, entropy will grow and therefore will be produce pollution. Even in the canes where we use the photovoltaic cells to fuel the fuel cell, in the first phase the photovoltaic cells is produced in companies that also result in a part of pollution. At last we can ask to ourselves how much current is measured and how much voltage does the fuel cell work. For this we have to use a voltmeter and an ammeter. We can verify that the voltage is about 0.7 volts and the current intensity is about 45 and 50 milliampers.